Alright, Shalom, Shalom, I'm gonna give all praise I've been out. Yeah, by Shem, my Shalom, I'm shy, by Shem, I'm cut with dust. Peace and blessings, all blood ones, by the time new covenant for the mission of sin. And today I have a quick one, which is gonna be 1 John chapter 2, verse 2. And it says, and he, and he is, right? The Lord Yahweh Shah, right? And he is, right? <laughs> the propitiation for our sins. And what? He is a propitiation for our sins. And not for ours only. Right? And what? And not for ours only. So the beloved is saying not for ours only, meaning not just the Israelites only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Alright? So the Yahweh is your only way into... Uh, everlasting life, man, into the immortal kingdom, all right? To be in the presence of that kingdom, you have to, what, have your sins appeased and atoned, man, all right? Because the Gentiles whose sins is not uh, appeased, they're going to perish, just like the Israelites. This is why the gospel is preached to the Jew and to the Gentile, all right? So it says, and he is appropriation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And that word world is cosmos. <clears throat> but you know, you, how would you see uh, Manasa Zakbar do with the other Manasa Zakbar always say, oh, it's cosmos. Uh, it, only, it only means for Israel. That's talking about the world of Israel. Yes, there is a world of Israel, but this scripture is talking about the whole world, man. And that word cosmos meaning the inhabitants of the earth. And you can look this word cosmos up there's scriptures where it's referred to everybody on the earth not just the israelites i can get verses on that but i'm not going to do all that all right but it's it's clear it's talking about all the inhabitants of the earth man all right because what the gentiles can sin which i did a video on that a few uh weeks ago all right showing you but like the scriptures everybody was under sin man the Gentile, the natural Gentiles and the Israelites. All right, so the Lord came to save man from that, which goes back to the curse of Adam, man. All right. Everybody was born <coughs> under the curses of Adam, man, a.k.a. sin. Right. So uh, the Lord died to redeem and purchase <coughs> his sheep, those that believe in him man, and follow him. All right, so it says that he is a propitiation, which that means to appease or atone. All right, so the Lord Yahweh Shai is our propitiation or our atonement. See, we, we're not our own atonement, beloved ones. Yeah, we do atone and we try to purify ourselves and, you know, mortify our members and, you know, keep the two greatest commandments and, you know, love your brother and fulfill the royal law and all that. But guess what? Even though we do all of those things, it's it's through it's through his sacrifice we have been atoned for our sins. See that? So it's faith and works, man. All right. So it says, and he is the propitiation for our sins, meaning the Lord Yahweh Shai, his his deeds and action is what uh, appeased uh, the Most High's wrath for our, us breaking that old covenant. And not for ours only. And what? And not for ours only. Showing you it's talking about two separate groups, which goes into the Israelites and the non-Israelites. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world, man. All right. So, yeah, the Lord Yahweh Shai died for the sins of, of the world of Israel, northern and southern kingdom, and as well as all the inhabitants of the earth. That's going to serve him in his kingdom. All right. They're, they're going to uh, not perish. Like the prophecy says in Isaiah. The nations uh, that are left. And the nations that won't serve you will per perish. All right. So the nations that do serve the Lord. He's a he's appropriation for their sins, man. He's an atonement for their sins, man. Just like uh, Job. Uh, prayed and sacrificed and atoned for Eliphaz sins, a natural Gentile. So with that all,
Tabanari, Abashan, Shalom.